y'all what's good beautiful people it's your girl tay and i'm here yet again with another update video so definitely make sure you guys smash that like button comment down below subscribe plus push your post notification bell button so that way anytime i upload a video you will be notified all right did i drop my phone because my little pen is sticking out i did Okay, that was completely off subject, but it doesn't matter. By the way, speaking of my phone, I did notice that one of you guys asked me what type of phone this was in the comment section. I can't remember what video. You said that it was a big phone, and it is. It is extremely big, and that's how I like it because I can't see on them little phones. But this is a Samsung Note 21 Ultra. Um, and Ultra just means it's bigger than the regular Note 21, okay? Um, but yeah, moving on, let's jump right into the news. So I did get a chance to check emergency SNAP maximum benefits for the month of May and to see if maybe there were some states that had been approved already for June. But we still, I want to say maybe next week, possibly the week after that, we should start to see some more states being added to that list. But as of today, I didn't see any states being approved for June. Okay, so jumping into the news, let's see what we got here. In the good old 90s, uh, 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 what was I about to say? Uh, United States of America. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about, Biden. Let's talk about what Biden is doing for us. Um, Biden is offering additional, uh, an additional eight free test for the virus, okay, just in case you didn't know, um, to the public, okay? It says the government website for people to request free at home test from the US government is now accepting a third round of orders just in case you were wondering and you want to get your hands on some the White House announced this Tuesday um, I'm wondering if it's today yes 11 hours ago this came out and it says that US households can request an additional eight free at home tests to be shipped by the US Postal Service the announcement comes as the virus cases are rising again in some areas of the country President Joe Biden committed to in January to making 1 billion tests available to the public free of charge, including 500 million available through, if you don't know, C-O-V-I-D-T-E-S-T-S dot gov. Again, that's C-O-V-I-D as in David, T as in test, E-S-T-S dot gov okay but just 350 million of the amount available for ordering online have been shipped to date to addresses across the continental u.s its territories and overseas military bases the white house has said people who have difficulty getting online or need help placing an order can contact 1-800-232-0233 for assistance the third round brings to 16 the total number of free tests available to each U.S. household since the program started earlier this year, okay? Households were eligible to receive four tests during each of two earlier rounds of ordering through the websites, okay? I actually didn't know that, but it's I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that this is available. I may actually be getting some of those myself. Biden has requested an additional $22 billion from Congress to buy vaccines and therapeutics to prepare for a fall spike in virus cases but lawmakers have balked at the price tag okay so they're basically not feeling this they're saying hey that's a lot of money a lot of people still feel that we are past um, the pandemic and that all of these resources that many politicians are trying to allocate to certain things is unnecessary okay so you know, it's going to be a lot of negotiating and going back and forth unless he tries to uh, implement some type of executive orders. And I really don't think that he can do so in this particular situation. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Moving on. Uh, this came out actually yesterday. I did talk to you guys a little bit about them possibly increasing Social Security benefits 8.6% next year. So we've got a little bit more information about that. Now, this information is not from the Social Security Administration itself. I just want you guys to be aware so you guys don't think I'm bringing you something that's um, not factual or whatever the case may be. I always try to tell you guys to take everything with a grain of salt because even though I am looking at news articles, we're not going to sit here and act like people don't lie or fluff up their pieces because they're trying to get people to read them. Um and get those numbers up okay but anyways this year social security cost of living adjustment also known as cola isn't nearly enough to help boost seniors purchasing power uh in fact according to data from the senior citizens league tscl high inflation has caused social security benefits to lose 40 percent of their buying power since the year of 2000 in january retirees saw a 5.9 percent increase um 
two benefits, the largest in four decades. However, this raise still doesn't help seniors with rising costs as much as one would think. I definitely didn't think that 5.9% was going to help you guys. And I know you guys who are dealing with this don't think that it's going to help you. And I'm pretty sure that next year when they try to do this 8.6 increase, they're probably going to increase everything else around the world. So you're still going to end up staying just where you are. During the year ending in March of 2022, TSCL found that beneficiaries saw a 10 percentage point drop in their purchasing power, okay? The study compared Social Security CLA adjustments with increases in the price of 37 goods and services typically used by retirees. Mary Johnson, uh, TSCL's Social Security Policy Analyst said that benefits were most impacted by increases in energy costs for home heating, gasoline, and higher food prices, okay? As well as 14.5% increase in Medicare Part B premiums in January, all right? The Labor Department announced that consumer prices rose 8.5% for the year ending in April, according to money, but the rate for Social Security benefits was even higher, 8.9% in April and 9.4% in March. Johnson estimated that COLA for 2023 will be about 8.6%, okay? So, According to this, they're saying that the typical increase or an estimated increase per, I want to say, household is that Social Security benefits would need to be, oh, no, no, no. They're saying that in order for people to be okay, at least better, in a better situation that they are now, those of you who are receiving these benefits, Social Security benefits would need to be $540 higher per month than they are right now. I definitely think that they should add a whole another $500 on there. I think that I mean, and I still know that this is cutting it close, but $1,600 is definitely not enough for anybody to live off of unless you found yourself some type of public housing that caters to retirees or senior citizens. In that case, that would be... Um, I know some of those housing establishments do go based off of your income and things of that nature. So that's the only situation where I could think that that will work and it still probably will not because if they're given $800 of their $1,600, they have $800 left. They still have to pay for gas, I would assume, their utilities and any other things, uh, cost that comes along with running a household. Y'all already know this. I don't get why the people um, in charge of making these decisions are not aware of this and I believe that they are, but the reality is that they just don't want to give more money to anybody if it's not making them look good they're not going to do it okay um yeah johnson found that the expenses for typical seniors rose to 130 percent during the same time period okay this means that in order for you guys to maintain the same buying power as you had in the year 2000 they're saying that they need to bump this up an additional 500 and something dollars okay so we'll we need for them to do it. Stop telling us what they think could help and actually do the things that they think will help, okay? Um, moving on from that, let's jump back into some more jargon from our president. President Biden passes a bill prohibiting sales of crib bumpers. This aims to reduce possible infant deaths, okay? President Joe Biden has signed new legislation that bans the sale of padded crib bumpers, which have been proven to pose risk to sleeping infants, okay? The Safe Sleep for Babies Act of 2021, also known as HR 3182, signed into law on Monday, prohibits the manufacture and sale of crib bumpers bumpers or inclined sleepers for infants okay the bill was first introduced last may by senator tammy duckworth of illinois senator rob portman of ohio and senator richard uh bluffman Blumetho, I don't know if I'm saying that right, of Connecticut, okay? According to the legislation, crib bumpers are defined as padded materials inserted around the inside of a crib and intended to prevent the crib occupant from becoming trapped in any part of the crib's openings. They do not include unpadded mesh crib liners, all right? Again, not that I don't appreciate the thought in this, but I think that there is so much more that goes... Um, along with uh, crib death, okay? There are certain instances, and I can say this from experience, somewhat experience, I had a, I have a child who actually, I didn't tell you guys, and I'll probably tell you guys in a completely different video because you're gonna think I'm crazy, don't know what I'm talking about, but my youngest daughter actually um, had to be hospitalized. Again, I'll give you guys, I probably gave you guys a story on this, but I'll give you guys a story in a completely different video if you want to know. But my daughter, one of my daughters, my youngest daughter actually had to be hospitalized because she stopped breathing, um, 
for no reason. And she wasn't in the crib. I was holding her in my arms. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning. I had just got through breastfeeding her and I was rocking her, you know, rocking her back to sleep. And I'm sitting straight up. I'm not laying down. I'm not laying on her. I'm holding her while I'm sitting straight up. And something told me to look down. And I looked down and my baby had damn near turned just as blue as my, um, this thing I got on my head. Um, we did CPR. We called. We called nine one one. I had to do CPR with nine one one on uh, speaker, and ended up taking her to the doctor. They ran a whole bunch of tests on her. Put her in a crib that looked like a prison cell. It was silver. It was metal. She had tubes everywhere. Machines plugged up on every single portion of her body. I couldn't hold her. I was in the hospital. I want to say a good seventy two hours. They couldn't find anything wrong with her. Told me she had SIDS, and she was one of the lucky ones. If you don't know what that is, it's sudden in sudden infant death syndrome. So that I. I I want to say that this is a situation where, uh, unfortunately, let's just say she had have been in a crib and not in my arms and I would have been asleep. I probably would have woke up and not found her alive. So I'm very, very grateful and thankful to that particular situation. I keep my kids next to me anyway, and I sleep extremely light. Even now that they're big, I sleep light. I can hear them coughing in my sleep and I'll jump up and which one of y'all did that? Who coughed? You know what I'm saying? My kids will go, no, mom, it's okay. I just, I just, you know, but anyways, getting back to what I was trying to say before I went off on a tangent. Um, unfortunately, there are just some things that even legislation like this just can't do anything about. Um, I do think that it, instead of doing this, maybe they should put a little bit more money and effort into trying to figure out what SIDS is because nobody really knows what it is. It's basically just them. That's their fancy way of telling you, we don't know why your baby died. We don't know why your baby stopped breathing. We have absolutely no idea because that's exactly what they told me. And that's exactly what they have told many people who have been in that situation. So if anything, I think that they should put the money towards research and trying to figure that out so that they can prevent it from happening as often as it happened. That's just my opinion. Moving on from that, the last and final thing that I wanted to bring to you guys, which is shocking. This actually came out three days ago. It says there's possible talk of stimulus checks, a thousand dollars for every American. And th there's a Republican that's actually proposing this. And he's saying, let's give a thousand dollars to our citizens instead of sending money over there to Ukraine. OK, now there is no official documentation. There has not been a uh, written proposal that has been brought up in front of Senate or whatever. This is just him speaking and saying this is what we should do. So it says Republican Representative Jim Banks has suggested it would be better to give each American $1,000 rather than providing Ukraine with a new aid package due to due to be passed by the Senate. Banks, who represents Indiana's 3rd Congressional District, told Fox News on Friday, last Friday, that the near $40 billion in aid that has been approved by the House of Representatives could be used to give Americans $1,000 each. However, the cost of giving each American $1,000 would be significantly higher than the $40 billion that is planned to be allocated to these other areas. The population is currently more than 332.6 million, according to the U.S. Census population clock. That that would mean a cost of more than $332.6 billion just to give everybody $1,000 each. That's $1,000 for every single American uh, is equivalent of $40 billion, banks said. And with what's going on in America right now, I'd rather be helping Americans get back on their feet than sending money abroad with no strings attached to foreign countries, the congressman said. Now, I know a lot of you guys have expressed that yourselves. I have expressed that as well. I have said, you know, I do think that they need to be handling what's going on over here. But at the same time, I want you guys to be realistic about the situation. Even though we are suffering over here, we have situations going on over here. I cannot imagine. It is not a joke, but I cannot even imagine what is going on over there. The fact that people are running, literally running for their lives, trying to hide out, trying to duck out from all of the everything that's going on. People are losing their family members. People are being separated. People are trying to get across the border to find safe haven and not being able to do so, having to sacrifice, decide whether it's more important for all of us to go or whether some of us should stay left behind. I cannot imagine being in that situation, having to make those types of decisions to protect my family. I couldn't imagine. So with that being said, even though I would appreciate having a thousand dollars over here for every American, I can honestly say that I feel like what they're going through right now is definitely far worse okay but that is it you guys
guys. Let's move on to SNAP maximum benefits for the month of May. I don't think that no additional states have been approved. If you guys didn't get a chance to check out my video from yesterday, you definitely want to do that because I did go over the payout dates. I won't be going over them in this video, just letting you know, but they were, I did go through them yesterday in yesterday's video. So for emergency SNAP maximum benefits for the month of May, just giving you the states that have currently been approved as of today, which is Tuesday, May the 17th. We have Alabama, Alaska, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Delaware, D.C., Georgia, Guam, Hawaii, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Minnesota, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, New, York, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, Vermont, Virginia, Virgin Islands, Washington, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. All right, you guys. That is absolutely all that I have for you guys in today's video. I hope this information was in some way helpful or useful to you guys in the least little bit. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button because it really truly does help to let YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and you want me to stick around. Also, let's drop some yellow hearts down below. I'm feeling sunny and bubbly today. I'm also feeling real, real hot. So let's drop some yellow or gold hearts down below in the comment section. Let me know that you made it all the way to the end of the video. As always, I'm going to say, remember to live, love, and elevate. And I I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Peace, y'all. Bye.